government in Canada appears to be on the turn. I don't know if this is legitimately on the turn or if it's just a well-choreographed wrestling match. But looking at the way things have been in Europe, maybe there's room for hope. And there is talk in Canada of allegations of treason. That's a very big word, treason. And I suppose in the past we would have taken treason very seriously. I'm not sure if we do quite so much now. So this article on Politico, written by Z. Ann Lum, Canada's Parliament rocked by allegations of treason. Foreign interference probe exposes links to witting lawmakers in Ottawa. Ottawa, the capital of one of the world's most stable democracies, is gripped by growing panic about foreign agents working in elected office. I suppose that's what you get if you have unregulated immigration and if you start sprinkling out citizenship like it's some kind of confetti. A bombshell report by Canadian lawmakers has unnerved Parliament Hill, alleging that unnamed politicians have been covertly working with foreign governments. Mm -hmm. Revelation in heavily redacted findings released this week by an all-party National Security Committee adds intrigue to a separate and ongoing inquiry into foreign interference in Canada's 2019 and 2021 elections. When is the Canadian election? Is this ahead of their election? Is this basically getting in front of any potential shenanigans there? The new report from the National Security and Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians is the first to suggest that lawmakers in Canada's parliament may have helped foreign actors meddle in political campaigns and leadership races. Oh dear, foreign actors like Gerard Depardieu, <laughs> big honk-nosed uh, Frenchman, heightened anxiety in Ottawa about foreign interference comes in the middle of historic global elections where factors such as artificial intelligence and emboldened foreign powers are testing the resilience of democratic systems. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has been on the defensive since the allegations broke Monday. Conservative leader Pierre Poilivier, I can never get his name right, sorry sir, is calling on the government to name names. The National Security Committee indicates there are members of this house that have knowingly worked for a foreign hostile government, Pulivier said Wednesday. Actual government, so that not what I was thinking with the World Economic Forum. Who knows, perhaps they might have facilitated some of these things, wittingly or otherwise. Canadians have a right to know who and what is the information. Who are they? The findings put pressure on Canada's National Police Force to investigate potential criminal charges. The report also refuels debate on the ability of the federal government's deterrence mechanisms to curb foreign interference in a country whose political and legal systems is considered one of the highest performing in the world. Really? By whom? Well, doesn't Canada have the British King as their head of state? What kind of power does the King wield there? Is he considered a foreign power? Are uh, agents of the British government seen as foreign? It's a very interesting, very blurry area there. The all-party NSICOP said Monday that it has reviewed intelligence that suggests semi-witting or witting parliamentarians have worked with foreign missions to mobilise voters during a political campaign, have taken cash knowingly, all through willful blindness from foreign missions or their proxies and have shared privileged information with foreign diplomatic officials. The committee, with top security clearance, said it based its findings on more than 4,000 documents and some 1,000 pieces of evidence. Its report said China remains the largest foreign interference threat to Canada, with India the second. Okay, so you have... I think China is more commonly or accurately described as a fascist state, is it? I mean, is it even remotely democratic? I don't know enough about China. I think my opinion of China is China can be China in China. But India is supposed to be a democracy. Do we have faith in democracies? I don't know. It's up to you. The intelligence included a claim that unnamed parliamentarians are taking direction from unnamed diplomats to improperly influence their colleagues or parliamentary business to the benefit of a foreign state. One of the most damaging lines in Monday's report points out Canada's failure to address long-standing challenges in how national security information can be used in criminal proceedings. The report says this is one reason why criminal charges for the potentially illegal activities are unlikely. 
Right. Although they did such things during Ghislaine Maxwell's court case, didn't they? They convicted her without naming any of the perpetrators of her apparent, I suppose she was a madam, wasn't she, of a brothel. Deputy Prime Minister Christia Freeland told reporters Tuesday that she takes the issue seriously. She deflected when asked if Canadians have the right to know the identity of the parliamentarians involved. We should recognise this is a new time, she said, adding authoritarians want to undermine democracies by sowing public distrust in government. Right. You're only going to get more distrust if you don't answer a simple question. If the question is, who has been potentially treasonous, and your answer is, we're not going to say, <laughs> then we might think, should we trust you? I don't know. I personally wouldn't, but I'd, I'd like to know why we shouldn't know. Other than it's a national security issue, what does that mean? Freeland would not commit to releasing names, nor did she agree that sunlight on the issue would benefit democracy. On Wednesday, after her Liberal Party's weekly caucus meeting, she ignored questions on the topic. The Trudeau government called an inquiry into foreign interference in September in the wake of claims that the Chinese government helped mobilise voters against a Conservative candidate in Western Canada and helped elect another as a Liberal in the Toronto area. It asked Justice Mary Jose Hogue with investigating foreign interference and election meddling, a topic that has captured the interest of US Congress. Last fall... Conservative MP Michael Chong appeared before the Congressional Executive Commission on China to testify about being targeted by Beijing because of his defense of Uyghur issues. Chong discovered through media reports that a Chinese diplomat has been assigned to collect information on him and his family. Canada's spy agency has warned other Canadian parliamentarians, including NDP MP Jenny Kwan, that they were also being surveilled by China. Are we not all being surveilled by China? I'm sure they have their uh, ways to see who's doing what, specifically or particularly if you're uh, using TikTok, apparently, allegedly. An initial report released by Ho last month observed that the government's messy handling of foreign interference has undermined the public's faith in Canadian democracy. Hoag's early findings stated that foreign interference did not significantly influence the 2019 or 2021 federal elections in a way that would have changed the fact that Trudeau's Liberals won back-to-back -back minority governments. Uh, yeah, they like to say that, don't they? There may have been election interference, but it wasn't significant. It was only a tiny little smidge of it. I would have barely even tasted it. The Conservatives were initially quiet about this week's revelations, but on Wednesday, Chong pressed the government to identify the parliamentarians alleged to have colluded with foreign state actors. There was a, a case of this actually in the UK, I think. Recently, they came out and admitted that there were certain MPs who had been exposed to some kind of blackmail ring through WhatsApp, apparently connected to some foreign agents. Not sure where from. We all know that no responsible government would reveal names under these types of confidential circumstances. Public Safety Minister Dominic LeBlanc responded on the floor of the House Commons. LeBlanc remained resolute Thursday against calls to release any names based on preliminary information. It's important for Canadians to understand that these names are contained in intelligence reports. In some cases, it's uncorroborated or unverified intelligence information. He told a parliamentary committee studying foreign interference the idea that there's a perfect list of names that is entirely reliable that should be released to the public is simply responsible. Well, yes, I mean, if there are names that might come out that might endanger those people before any due legal process could be initiated, perhaps keep them on the down low, but don't do nothing, I would imagine. David McGinty, chair of the NSICOP, which published the buzzy redacted report, said the decision to publicise the names of lawmakers is outside of his control. McGinty and the nine other NSICOP members with top secret security clearances are bound by Canadian Security of Information Act and risk prosecution if they inadvertently reveal classified information, he said. He wouldn't say if he's bothered by sitting in the same party caucus with potential abettors of foreign interference. I'm more concerned about the fact that now the government has to move forward on this, McGinty said. What were these other links? 
National Security and Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians, Special Report on Foreign Interference in Canada's Democratic Processes and Institutions. What's the index of this? What issues do we have here? Blimey. There's lots here. I shan't be reading this. Lots of blah 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 there. Canada is a stable, high-performing democracy, is it indeed? After undergoing a major constitutional revision in 1982, Canada has had very strong constitutional protections of fundamental rights. Well, I hope so, but it's a very contemporary thing going on at the moment, what with our globalist desire to leash or lash us all together into one supranational group. See, I thought we were going to have an international federal layer and the nations themselves would be left up to their own devices and uh, would govern themselves. But it, it appears, from what I can tell, from what people have been saying about particularly places like Canada, and I'm sure it's happening everywhere, there's lots of lobbying and investment into political candidates who have allegiances to organizations like the World Economic Forum. So whilst you may be voting for them, perhaps they're actually performing for more global interests and they're only acting as if they're working on your behalf. And there was an interesting case of this last year. The UK has an election coming up next month, I think. July 4th, is it? And I keep hearing that Keir Starmer, this Labour chap, you could imagine being a soft-core communist, is on record saying that he would rather spend his time with Davos, the Davos crowd, than with his own people. So here we go. This is something I picked up earlier on. Keir Starmer, you have to choose between Davos and Westminster. Westminster is effectively the UK's equivalent of Congress. And I suppose the House of Lords also would be their equivalent of uh, the Senate. And this, this chap here, um, the likes of the BBC and, and the rest of the UK mainstream media appear to be trying to push forward as the only potential winner. I hope not. Let's see what these wonderful people say, shall we? Brace yourselves, we're going to play this. Let's just ask you quickly, you have to choose now between Davos or Westminster. Davos. Why? Because Westminster is too constrained um, and... You know, it's closed and we're not having meaning. Once you get out of Westminster, whether it's Davos or anywhere else, you actually engage with people um, that you can see working with in the future. Westminster is just a, a tribal shouting place. So, yes, his government, his seat in government is just a tribal shouting match, apparently, and he'd much rather be outside of there and hanging out with the Davos crowd. So it doesn't surprise me that stuff like Brexit got so jammed up when you have people like this who are the lead of the uh, opposition party in the uk openly saying they are much more inclined to a big business than the people which is pretty shocking really i don't know how you can backtrack from that and still maintain some kind of face but for all those people in the uk do you really want to be electing somebody who is so deeply in bed with davos I'm not saying you shouldn't have some ties with international industry, but he was also very quick to answer that question, wasn't he? He didn't pause to think, did he? Davos! Definitely Davos. I love them. Yes, the Davos people. <laughs> They're my favourite. So I don't know, is this chap going to be the next Prime Minister of Canada? Yeah, poor I hope so. And also, I wouldn't count Nigel Farage out, because he's doing really well. I hear he's done very well in a lot of the debates and people like him. I know the news seems to be trying to cast him as being an irrelevant third choice. But it's some of the polls he said apparently are showing the Reform Party is actually doing better than the Conservative Party, which is the UK's equivalent of the Republicans. So Reform would be, I guess, the UK equivalent to Germany's uh, AFD or the US is MAGA, apparently stealthily uh, growing in the background. So where are we? How much time have we got? <laughs> We've got about three weeks. Can they pull ahead in three weeks? The Reform Party and the Conservative Party might just about gather enough votes to collectively form a coalition government and stop Labour from actually winning in the election. And this is something no one's talking about. All of these mainstream media outlets are claiming that it's a done deal, that Labour's going to win. Well, if Labour wins the largest share of the vote 
on their own, but yet the Conservatives and the Reform Party, which is also a Conservative Party. I mean, the Conservative Party in the UK is basically a neocon party, but they're much more inclined to ally with each other. I would have thought, I don't know, perhaps it might be a case of the Reform Party being kingmakers, so they can decide either or and barter for some kind of position, as has happened a few times in the past. A few years ago, a decade or so ago, there was another party, the Liberal Democrats in the UK, that won enough votes to get into a, an allegiance with the Conservatives to force these soft-core commies out. So yes, I wouldn't uh, count these guys in as being the sure winners. I think there might be some actual resistance. But the question of whether the government we get in Canada or in the United States or in Australia or wherever whether it's actually populist and representative, I'm feeling as if it's becoming more likely. I mean, if you look at what's happened in Europe recently, certain people don't seem very happy about the result there, and a lot of other people are very happy. So we'll see. I hope so. I hope we see some more meaningful democratic action in our governments. We can come to some kind of productive compromise with these agents of big business. We'll see. I hope so. Anyway, pigwig out!